Good morning, folks. Hi, I'm Phil McPhail with United Country Lifestyle Properties of Maine. And if you're coming here to see that incredible urban house in a cul-de-sac neighborhood with neighbors all around you, lots of traffic and retention ponds with water so probably dirty, you can't even grow a black fly in it. Man, you guys took a wrong turn on the internet somewhere because we're today, we're at 372 Wolf Run Trail in the town of Greenbush. I'm going to show you some of the most extremely private property you can find in Penobscot County. Let's go take a look. Folks, I told you it was remote here. This location is very unique. We are at two and a half miles in on a private gravel road. We've got a clear deeded right away. No worries, folks, if you're wondering. This is the last two lots on the property, making up nearly 90 acres, just 89 and some change. The boundaries and the natural geography here are such that we're setting towards the center of the land. We've got wetlands, of pretty extreme wetlands on both sides of us, um, east and west. So you put a gate on this road at the beginning of your property and nobody's going to probably get in here except for wildlife. And because of the natural geography, it's a pretty good funnel for game. We see a lot of moose sign, deer sign, and black bear on this property as well as a really nice uh, population of rough grouse or as we like to call them, partridge. The property here at 372 Wolf Run Trail, we're located here in Greenbush and Green, in this location, we're about 29 miles northeast of Bangor International Airport. So if you're coming here from out of state, you want to fly up and see it, you can be here. It's about a 50 minute ride. You got to go through a few small towns and it actually takes a little while to get over this really rough two and a half miles of road, which keeps that privacy up. The city of Portland's 166 miles or about two hours and 50 minutes and Boston is 267 miles more or less. And that's about four and a half hour drive. We're remote, you can get here. Most of the road coming here is I-95 if you're coming from the south and uh, a little bit off Route 2 to get right to this property. This is the driveway that comes into the cabin and it's over the private road that is about two and a half miles long. And we're almost to the cabin here. So you can see it's a pretty good road. It is rough in places. Um, you know, it'd probably discourage people with low riding cars getting in here from ground clearance, but four wheel drive was not necessary to access the property. Folks, the forest on this property is kind of an early secessional forest. Uh, prob I'm guessing this was timber harvested 30 years ago, maybe a little longer. We've got a lot of birches coming in here, spruce, fir, pine. Not a lot of maple in this part of the state, or at least in this region right here. We've got a few, um, but just very nice forest to walk through. Quite dense, lots of firewood. If you want to live here year round, uh, one person did in the past. You got, a, you got a lifetime supply of firewood here and then some. The cabin here in Greenbush sits on 89 plus or minus acres, as I said earlier. Right around the cabin, we've got some nice clearing, got a beautiful little uh, rock fire ring out here. Mowed up the lawn around the cabin, and we're gonna go over and check out a private pond that they have on this property that with a little work, I think you could make a nice little trout pond out of. This is the pond and you'll see how, how it is situated from the cabin on the, this is probably about a 10th of an acre pond. It's all has a pretty good retention wall around it. Um, there's a small creek that kind of feeds in and out of it. So, you know, I think you could really make this a nice pond. It's uh, got a lot of weed and algae growth in it because it hasn't been taken care of. A few uh, of uh, the all natural chemicals for ponds you could throw in there, clean this right up, make a beautiful little trout pond place to bring the kids down, let them cast at bluegills, or if you want to stock it with trout, whatever. Nice little water feature here on the 372 Wolf Run Trail. Okay, now we're out here at the front of the cabin, and I just want to point out a few things. We are truly off-grid and probably always will be. We do have a drilled well on the property that takes care of the water supply, a gray water system for your sinks and showers and your laundry, and a composting toilet for all the rest. Um, there is a shower and we'll take a look at that. Outside we've got solar panels here, we're going to look at those. And a, a nice covered porch here behind me that's uh, 8 by 14 and then we have a 14, or excuse me, a 20 by 8 foot deck on the back of the cabin. Let's go take a look at that. This cabin is 20 by 32 and it's a modified A-frame. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't have the, the peak at the top as some do more of a gambrel style roof. About 960 square feet in this building. Now over here, just east of the cabin, we have four 
315 watt solar panels. And these uh, are producing the power needs for the lighting. And that's pretty much all they do. Other than the fan for the composting toilet, this runs that and the lights in the cabin. And if you wanna watch television, you certainly can do that too. Out here behind the cabin now and above me is the attached deck that's uh, eight by 20. And then here we have a single bag um, under the house so you can put a small vehicle in here or right now there's a tractor in there. So that kind of makes that nice. There are no other outbuildings. You might want to add a garage here at some future date. And there's plenty of space to do that. We got this uh, wooden hot tub here. I, I, it hasn't been used in a long time. Current owners haven't used it at all. It does have a wood burner for heating your water. Um, I think a little bit of work here. You might be able to get it uh, up and running again. Check it out, come up here when you get here, look at it, see what you think. Let's go on inside and take a look at the cabin. When you come in from the front porch, you come right directly into the kitchen. Uh, we've got a uh, Formica type countertop here, some, some cabinetry. This is a gas cook stove, and we also have an LP gas refrigerator. It's, it's a little larger than your normal LP gas fridge, so that's kind of nice. From here, we're gonna go over and take a look at the bathroom. And this is houses the composting toilet. We also have the corner shower here and a, and a sink. Folks, before we continue our tour of the house, don't forget, subscribe to this channel if you like seeing these videos and you want to get them before they're sold. If you're watching this and it's 2023, you probably missed this property. A uh, really good chance of it. Um, anyway, that's the reason to subscribe. And when you do that, make sure you put on the notification bells and turn on all notifications. YouTube's not real nice. It doesn't always understand you want to see these on time. So make sure you do that. This is the living space in the, in the cabin here. And I think we've got 15 by 17 room. We've got a uh, wood stove in here. For, that's the primary heat. There is this gas fireplace. This is not hooked up. The sellers do intend to leave that here. We also have direct access from the living room out onto the deck that we saw earlier in the video. So that makes it nice. You can get front and back either way. Because of the A-frame nature of this uh, structure, we do have spiral staircases for both uh, interior access to the basement as well as the second floor. So let's go on upstairs and check out the two bedrooms up here. Once you hit the top of the stairs here for the spiral staircase to my left, you come into the back bedroom. And this is a nice sized room. It does have a closet, plenty of room for a king or queen size bed in here. There is a balcony that goes out to the back, overlooking the backyard. That needs some work. Uh, if my client can get to it, he might do it, but just keep a note of that, that you don't want to use it in its current condition. From this back bedroom, we come through a small hallway. We got a closet right here and we come into the second upstairs bedroom, which also has a closet over here. Both of these rooms are carpeted and have windows letting in plenty of light and you got a, a light on the ceiling as well. Now we come down the second set of spiral staircase into the basement. Now this is a full concrete block basement with a cement slab on the floor. We got full height here. I'd say it's pretty close to eight feet to the rafters or to the floor stringer, excuse me. Uh, we do have the attached garage space we'll look at next, but let's look at the solar power system before we get over there. Here in the, in the front of the foundation is where your solar power comes in for your inverter and charge controllers. Um, that's right here on this wall, along with your circuit breakers and your on off switch. In this box below it, we have six uh, 12 volt batteries here. And I think we've got four more here for a total of 10 12 volt lead acid batteries. This is a pretty basic solar system, but it does the job nicely. It worked for the previous owner. I sold that to the folks that own it now for, and, and they've upgraded it with new panels. Over here, we've got a washer hookup, your gray water system heading out that way. And behind us over here, we have our pressure tank for the well coming in and there's a water filter system here. We've got a small gas heater for the basement and this is a gas or L, uh, propane, okay? We, we always say gas up here, but this is a propane water heater. Behind the water heater, we have a lined concrete block chimney. As we come over from the other part of the basement, we're into the 
uh, garage bay, if you will. And this is big enough for a pretty good sized tractor. You could park, um, I don't think you get a pickup truck in here, not enough head clearance, but an SUV, uh, something a little bit shorter than a pickup truck should fit in here. Keep your, keep your ATV, keep your tractor, what else here, and put up a garage for your pickups. I got to, I got to point something out to people. Um, and, and I, and I'm not making fun of you who were scared of bears. Okay. If, if Maine was full of grizzlies that were constantly eating people, I would get it, but we've got Maine black bears here, folks, and they are not the vicious animal people think they are. Yeah. I suppose if you went up and punched one in the nose or kicked one of the cubs, you might have a problem, but bear attacks are almost none. However, there is a problem. And if you come up here to Maine, you want to pay attention. Don't feed the bears. Now, my clients, God love them, they know better. And I'm gonna, they're, they're gonna laugh when they see this, but they were uh, cleaning up for me and they had their burn barrel going and uh, they didn't burn it all. And the bears did find it. So we should have hung this right on this barrel. And for all of you who come up here and worry about bears, don't worry about them, but don't leave them a snack that they, you know, they throw all over your yard. You're gonna have to clean it up later. That kind of wraps up our tour of the building and the land here at 372 Wolf Run Trail in Greenbush. Let's kind of go over a few things together. The taxes and all of that information and additional info on the property will be right here in this panel. Check that out. Guess the price. Are you, are you guessing the price, folks? Uh, I know you're probably thinking this has got to be at least two, 250, uh, somewhere in that ballpark if you've seen other properties for sale. Wrong. It's less than that. Let's try 150,000 folks. If you're interested in an off-grid, very remote property where you're not really roughing it, you get a call on this one today. Give me a call at 800-286-6164. We'll send you a property information package, or better yet, let's schedule a viewing for you to come up here and take a look at this property. Talk to you soon. This is what happens when you feed the bears.